Well, we are glad that you could join us this evening. We're coming to you live from Hunters Creek Baptist Church. And if I seem a little nervous, it's because I am. We actually have a live audience member here with us tonight that's not named Huff. Miss Sandra Elrod is on the back row by herself uh, joining us. And so it's a little different to, to have a live spectator, but it's awesome that she's here. We're glad that you're here. And what we're going to talk about tonight for a few minutes uh, the title is Crazy Talk. And what I mean by that is, uh, people, a lot of people, if you, um, a lot of people say things about the Bible or about Christianity that are just not true. And the more you understand about the Bible and about Christianity, you realize that people say some crazy things about the Bible and about Christianity. And honestly, the world is full of people who um, don't really know what they're talking about when they talk about a lot of different things. Um, we've all met people who would talk about something, but in reality, they really didn't know what they were talking about. And the truth is, we're probably all guilty of that ourselves a little bit. Um, I'll uh, admit that there are <laughs> is quite a long list of things that I don't really know that much about. Uh, things that I don't, if I was to talk about it, I wouldn't really know what I was talking about. And I just thought two things off the top of my head that I don't know that much about are automobiles and guns. Okay, if you wanted to carry on a conversation with me about automobiles and guns, if we were going to talk for 30 minutes, you'd have to talk for about 29 minutes and 45 seconds. I just don't know that much about it. I own both, I've used both, but I don't know that much about it. Um, and if you listen closely to people when they talk, um, you can figure out a lot of times they don't really know what they're talking about. And uh, it's often true in sports. If somebody's talking about sports or they're watching sports, if you know about that sport and they don't know that much, you can kind of figure out they don't know that much. And one, there's a great example um, uh, that I think illustrates this. Um, it's, it's a baseball game or the sport of baseball. And if you're watching a baseball game, you're at a baseball field or you're playing baseball, um, if you're around the game long enough or around the field long enough, you're eventually going to hear somebody say um, they're going to talk about how many points their team has, okay? Um, they'll say something to the effect of, we need to score some more points, or we're ahead by two points, or we're down by ten points. If, if they're saying that, they probably are down by 10 points, okay? Uh, or they might even holler at the person that's keeping the scoreboard and say, we need our points, okay? You'll hear that. But the truth is this. Um, in baseball, if you know baseball, you're really a baseball fan. In baseball, you don't score points. You score runs. Um, basketball, you get points. Baseball, you score runs. And so the truth is, if you say points, and you're talking about baseball, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but you really don't know what you're talking about, okay? And it's obvious by what you're saying that you don't know what you're talking about. It's a dead giveaway. If you're talking about baseball or softball and you're calling it points, it's a giveaway. And so um, a person who really knows the truth about baseball and really is a diehard baseball fan, so to speak, would never refer to it as points. Now, um, why am I talking about that? Well, this is the truth. When it comes to Christianity, there are also a lot of people who really don't know what they're talking about. And you can tell they don't know what they're talking about if you listen closely to the things that they say. It's a dead giveaway. And I'm not talking about mispronouncing Bible words, okay? I mispronounce Bible words. I've got a lot of, I was thinking of stories where I've heard people mispronounce Bible words. Um, some of you, <laughs> that, that's not what we're talking about. I've heard someone call Malachi Malachi. I've heard people call, a lot of people call Job, Job. Um, I've heard um, um, di different, um, uh, <laughs> there was an example, a, a kid at church calling Exodus, Exodius. Okay, and so, People will mispronounce things. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about things that people say that are inaccurate or wrong. And in 1 John, what the Bible is going to do is say, if somebody says this, they are dead wrong. And so I'm going to read some examples. 
um, and give you really three points and try to keep this as short as possible. Three points or three things that people say that shows they really might not know what they're talking about and it also shows that they there's a high chance they're not even a Christian. And this is the first thing that somebody might say that is a red flag that there, there's something is not right here. When somebody says, I'm a good person. Okay? Now, I'm going to read some verses out of 1 John. It's 1 John 1.8. Um, and um, this, it's actually a common thing to hear somebody say this. We've all heard people say it. I'm a good person. Um, but 1 John 1.8, listen to these verses. This is what the Bible says. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And so what the Bible is saying is if we say that we have no sin or if we say that we have not sinned in the past, the Bible says you deceive yourself, the truth is not in you, his word is not in you, and you are calling God a liar. See, instead of saying that I have no sin, which is, means I'm not doing anything wrong, and I haven't done anything wrong, to the contrary, what the Bible is saying is we've got to confess our sins. And if we'll confess our sins, then God will forgive us of our sins. And this is just a very common belief, but it's 100% wrong. This is the common belief, that the world is divided into two types of people. This is the way a lot of people think. The world is divided into good people and bad people. And most people think they are in the good category. Okay? There's good people, there's bad people. And people say things like this all the time. Well, I've never killed anybody. I've never hurt anybody. I've never been arrested. And they list all these things they've never done. So they think that makes me good. And then there's bad people in the world. Well, the bad people in the world are usually people view that as criminals, people who are in prison, gang members, addicts. And so those are the bad people. There's good, there's bad, I'm good. That's why most people tend to think. That is 100% wrong. Okay? There's a great example of this in the Bible of a man who thought that way. It's in Luke 18. And Jesus told this story just to show how wrong this man was. This is the way he prayed. It's in Luke 18, verse 11. It says, The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. So what the man is basically standing up and praying, he's a very religious man, he stands up and he prays, he says, God, I thank you, I'm not like other people. I'm not an adulterer, I'm not unjust, I'm not an extortioner, I'm not like this tax collector, I fast, I tithe. He basically thinks there are bad people out there, thank God I'm not one of them. But the Bible, Jesus is going to say that man went home not right with God. He was not right in God's eyes. He was, he was totally wrong with his beliefs. And when somebody says things like that, it is a major red flag that they do not understand. This is what the Bible's going to say, and try to keep this simple. The Bible's going to say this, that we all are in one boat. We're all alike. Um, I tell my kids this, and uh, we're all children of Adam and Eve. I wasn't planning on getting into this, but I did it down in our house. There's seven of us in our house. Me, Jennifer, five kids. And I said, look, just talk about it. Do all, all seven of us mess up? Do we all seven sin? Does everybody in this house do things that are wrong? Absolutely. I could talk about any one of my kids. They could talk about me. They could talk about Jennifer. Seven for seven. We're all children of Adam and Eve. We're all alike. And you can go to any house in Georgia, any house in Illinois, California, New York. Everybody's alike. They're, and this is what the Bible's going to say. There's none righteous, no, not one. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all like sheep have gone astray. We've turned our own way. And so we're all much more similar than we are different. We're all in the same category in God's eyes. And just to um, try to help us understand that, try to help us understand there's not good people and bad people. There's just a, people are sinful, period. Um, to try to help you understand that, I'll give you a few points. This is what you got to do. This is what you got to understand. 
Because people really see the world this way. Good people, bad people, I'm good. But there's some things the Bible's going to teach that can help us to see it the right way. The first thing is this. You've got to look at your heart. Okay? The um, Bible teaches us that God does not look at the outer appearance as man does, but God looks at our hearts. And the reality is Jesus talked about this, and Jesus taught it in a very clear way where Jesus said, you know it's wrong to commit adultery, but I'm telling you, if you lust after a woman in your heart, you've committed adultery in your heart. And then he said, you know it's wrong to murder somebody, but if you hate your brother, especially if you hate your brother without a cause, you're, it's equal to murder. It's the same thing as murder to have hate in your heart. And it's so important to understand that God does not look at our outward appearance. He does not look at our manners. He does not look at what we say to people. He looks at our heart, and there's all kinds of sins that are in our heart. I, I just wrote some down. Lust, hate, greed, malice, bitterness, jealousy, anger, selfish ambition. And this is the reality. When you get to think about people's hearts, and you begin to not, not, not think about what somebody's done or hasn't done, their heart it begins to level the playing field and all of us become more similar. The second thing is this, you've got to look at God's laws. Um, most people measure their self or their, 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 um, their status based on human laws. And so people will say, I've never been arrested. I don't do anything that's illegal. Um, I, 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 I've, I've never committed a felony. But then, and this goes back to what I was just saying. There are lots of legal sins. Okay, all the sins of the heart are legal. You don't get in legal trouble, but God is looking at us by his standard, not the standards of the United States of America or laws of Georgia, his standards. And so when we focus on our human standards, we ignore God's standards. And it's, that's why the Bible is so important. It's showing us what God commands us to do. And what's the greatest commandment in the whole Bible? If you ask the average person what's the most important commandment, they would probably guess do not murder. That is not the right answer. Jesus taught very clearly the greatest commandment in the Bible is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. To love God supremely with every fiber in your being. To love him the most. That's the greatest commandment. Well, when you start thinking in those terms, that levels the playing field because most people fail in that regard. Most people cannot honestly say that I love the Lord with all my heart. That's why we're all guilty. And then you think about the Ten Commandments. People talk about, well, the Ten Commandments. I live by the Ten Commandments. Well, the first four of the Ten Commandments have to do with your relationship to God. How you relate to God. The first of the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. That means that you should love the Lord the most. You should honor him. You should worship him. You should give him your allegiance first and foremost above anything else. That's the first of the Ten Commandments. The second is you should not have make any idols or worship any idols. The Bible talks about covetousness being idolatry. And so it means that, that, that God should be honored and exalted alone in our, in our life. Then we should uh, not take the name of the Lord in vain. And that doesn't just mean um, cursing. It means that you take the name of the Lord as an empty thing. And you, you say that you're a follower of Christ, but your life doesn't add up to that. And then to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And I'm just, this is the point I'm trying to make. The more we start looking at God's standard, the more we realize that we all are falling short and we're all very similar. Uh, you might can say, I've never committed a felony. I've never been arrested. I drive the speed limit. That doesn't matter. That's not the measuring stick for what this is. You got to look at your heart. You got to look at God's law. And then you got to look at your whole life. Um, and when we, when we look at, when we, when we evaluate, we grade our own papers, the way I like to say it, um, we can have a selective memory. But the, the Bible says, and there's a lot of places that says it, the last two verses of Ecclesiastes says that God will bring every work we've done into judgment, including every good or bad thing, every secret, hidden thing. Our life will be judged based on the totality of our life. Okay? And the reality is, if we, if, if we look at our whole life, there's just no telling how many sins we've committed. There are a few verses that I thought of that I, I, don't, I hadn't talked about these verses in a while, which I hadn't uh, seen everybody in a while at Hunter's Creek. But um, this is a little passage. I've used this verse before. It's Hosea 7.2. It says, They do not consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own deeds have surrounded them. See, God remembers all of our wickedness. Um, we, we even forget, we forget all the things we've done wrong. Um, Psalm 50, verse 21, is making the same point. 
These things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you, and I will set them in order before your eyes. So we do a lot of things that are sinful, and God keeps silent. Nothing happens, and we just kind of move on. But if we were, if we were able to stack up our whole life, we're, we're, we're not. I, the record's not going to be good. The, and I, I'll just say this. The Bible, Bible talks about it very clearly. We all lived among them at one time, gratifying the desires of our flesh and our mind. And the, we, we all have a past. And this is the truth, and I hope everybody can understand this. If you look at your heart, and you look at God's laws, and you look at your whole life, everybody's going to reach the same conclusion. I'm very guilty. All of us are. We're all in one boat. And when somebody says, I'm a good person, that is a red flag that they don't understand that. And why does it matter? Why does it matter? Because what it says in 1 John, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, until a person realizes that I really am a guilty sinner, I really have been rotten, I really have done a lot of things wrong, I really have not loved God and honored God, I have not, I have not lived as I should toward God, toward other people, they're not going to cry out for grace and forgiveness, they're not going to turn to Jesus. And um, so you got, you got to understand, and, and when somebody says I'm a good person, I'm just telling you, it, it, it raises a red flag, it is, it is really... When, when you read the Bible, we should all say like John Newton famously wrote, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. A wretch. That's the way he felt about himself. Paul said he was the chief of sinners. Um, you've got to see that and feel that. Or otherwise, you, you, you're just not, you're not understanding the truth. And so it's really crazy. It's crazy for anybody to stand there and say, I'm a good person on my own. Um, it's just not true. The second thing is this. When somebody says this, and I have to explain this a little bit, but it's very clear in the Bible what I'm about to say, is when somebody says, I am a sinful Christian, or I'm a bad Christian, and people will say little things like that, and it could, I, it, it's hard to know exactly what they mean by that, but what I mean by it is just what this verse says, 1 John 2, 4, this is why it's crazy to say that. 1 John 2, 4 says this, He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So what that means is that somebody's going to say, I know the Lord. Basically, it's the same idea of saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a follower of Jesus, but they do not obey his commandments. The Bible says they're a liar and the truth is not in them. And so um, it's, it's just describing a person that's saying, I know the Lord. But their lifestyle is just a lifestyle of disobedience. They don't live by the Word of God. They don't live by the teachings of Jesus. They don't obey the, the commandments. That They just do whatever they want to do. And the Bible's saying that, they, that, that they're a liar and the truth is not in them. And so this is just trying to put two and two together here. The truth is we're all sinners. We're all in one boat. None of us are good on our own. But... When a person believes the gospel in their heart and when a person repents of their sins and when a person is born again and when a person begins to follow Jesus, that person and their life and their conduct is going to change for the better. It's going to make a difference. They're not going to be perfect, but they're not going to live an utterly sinful lifestyle. And this is all throughout the New Testament. It's all in the book of 1 John. Um, I'm not just, this is not my opinion. 1 John 2.29 says, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Then 1 John 3.10 says a very similar thing. And this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. And so the truth is a Christian is not perfect and people almost love to say that too much. It's, they're not perfect, but the Bible says they do practice righteousness. It means that their general habits, their general lifestyle on a typical day, they're doing what's right 
the majority of the time. We all stumble in many things, but their lifestyle is marked by righteousness. It's what the Bible's saying. That's how you know who the children of God and the children of the devil are. If a person does not practice righteousness and a person does not love his brother, it's crazy to say that person's a follower of Jesus. It's just not true. Um, and it's, it's common. It's common to hear people who just do not live a godly lifestyle, who do not follow the teachings of the Bible, who do not follow the teachings of Christ, say they're Christians. And what the Bible's saying is, that's not true. And it's all over the New Testament, okay? Um, and I, I'm, I'm trying to debate whether or not to read you all these verses. I'm just going to quote a few of them and read a few of them. Um, it's all over the New Testament. So this is not some radical teaching that... This is the bottom line. When a person is saved, born again, become a follower of Christ, repent of their sins, put their faith in Christ for salvation, it makes a difference. Jesus said it just like this. A good tree does not produce bad fruit. A bad tree does not produce good fruit. By their fruit, you can tell them. You can see what's what by what comes out in their life, in their conduct, in their lifestyle. But uh, just to, to read a few passages, I'm going to take the time to do it because it's, uh, it's, it's very important, honestly. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Paul wrote and said this. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So Paul's saying, do not be deceived about this. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And he gives this list of people. And, he, and he's just very clear about it. That, that people on that list, people whose lifestyle is being described, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And this was this. And that's what some of you were. You were that way. Yeah, a lot of people were that way. But he says this, you were washed, you were justified, you were sanctified. Salvation occurred in your life, and it's, the, it's, it's Christ and the Spirit of God inside of you that make you into a new person. You don't continue to live like you've always lived. Uh, the book of Galatians, it's a very similar passage. Galatians 5, 19 says, the works of the flesh are evident. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outburst of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelry, the like. Which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. See, he's saying, there's people who practice all these things. These, it's just this list of just sinful conduct. If they're practicing that, and just like somebody practices piano every week, somebody practices basketball every day, that if they're practicing these sins, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. That's not the Christian life. That's not what it means to be a follower of Christ. There's more passages. I'll read one more just because I kind of like this one. It's very short. Ephesians 5, 5 says this. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. See, you say, look, the, the, the fornicator, that's the sexually immoral person, uh, the covetous man, the idolater, the unclean man, they have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. And then he says, look, well, don't, don't let anybody deceive you with empty words. That means that, that they can say whatever they want to say. They, they can make whatever claim they want to make. But you know what it is? It's empty words. It's actually crazy talk. It's crazy for a person whose lifestyle is just head over heels into sin and uh, just practicing it, just working at it, just doing it over and over and over every day, just every weekend. And to say that person is a follower of Christ, that person has been born again, the Bible's saying it's, it's just not true. And um, I, I really believe this and I say it. I need to have more sorrow in my heart. Hopefully I do say it with sorrow in my heart. The world is filled with people who do not understand this, who think I'm a Christian because I believe there is a God. That is not what makes a person a Christian. A Christian believes the gospel in their heart. They've repented of their sins. They've been born again and they're following Christ. And when you understand that, the Christianity changes your mind. It's a change. You have a change of mind. That's what it means to repent. You change your mind. You get a new heart. You have a changed heart. You change your allegiance. You become... Um, devoted to Christ, your conduct is going to change. And 
the reality is I thought about doing this. I could, I could name names of, I mean, famous people, celebrities, people who have been, who, 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 who <laughs> their lifestyle is totally contradictory to what the Bible would teach. And, um, but there, it's not my job to name names and to judge individuals. What I'm trying to do is just help people understand I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not really trying to figure out who's on the right path and who's not. But I can tell you what the judge says. And it's right here in black and white. It's in red. If somebody says, I know him, but they do not obey his commandments, they're a liar. Somebody says, I have no sin, they deceive their self. And so when somebody says, I'm a good person, or somebody says, I'm a Christian, but I'm a bad, I'm a bad Christian, that is not what the Bible is teaching. The Bible is teaching we are sinners, but when you get saved, you're not perfect. You're not what you ought to be, but you're not what you used to be. And the last thing that I'll, I'll, I'll say right here, that something that people say that's crazy is this. When somebody says, I love God, but I hate people. Or I love God, and I hate this person. I hate, okay, the Bible's very clear about it. This is all coming out of 1 John. And back to 1 John uh, 4, verse 20. It can't be any plainer than this. It's, Again, you read the Bible, it's, it's eye-opening, it's very clear. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? Somebody says, I love God, but I hate my brother. The Bible says, that person's lying. That's just not true. That's crazy to even say that. I love God, but I hate Mr. Uh, Jones. I hate Miss Smith. I hate X, Y, and Z. And this is the truth again, and I'm just kind of summarizing this, but when a person's born again, a person follows Christ, their heart's changed. They get a new heart, and their heart is filled with love for God and love for other people. Romans 5, 5 says, the love of God is poured out in your heart by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. And what that means is a person that's a Christian genuinely cares about other people. They genuinely care about another person's well-being. Um, about the, the welfare of other people. They don't have malice and hate and bitterness and jealousy and envy in their heart toward other people. Instead, they have goodwill, kindness, compassion, love in their heart for other people. It's all over the Bible. This is a birthmark of a Christian. 1 John 2, 11. He who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness. He does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 1 John 3, 14. Um... We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. And so the reality is this, that, that Jesus is the greatest example of this. He loves sinners. Um, he loved tax collectors, prostitutes, uh, thieves. He loved them. He loved poor people. He loved the sick, the downcast, the needy. He showed love to people who were not Jews across ethnic boundaries. He loved the young people. He loved the old people. And that is the heart of a Christian. The Bible's being clear about that. To say that I'm a Christian, I'm, I love God, and I hate these other people who are made in the image of God is just craziness. And so um, when somebody says something like that, it's just obvious. That is a red flag. That is a gigantic red flag. And so um, that's the three points. When somebody says, I'm a good person, or somebody says, I'm a Christian, but I'm a bad Christian. Or somebody says, I love God, but I don't love X, Y, and Z. Or I don't love this group of people or this type of person. Um, it's a major red flag. And I, I can say this, and I, I, I don't know how good a job I did with this, but I will say this. It's, it was understanding some of these truths that opened my eyes to my own reality, to the fact that, Number one, I was not a Christian when I was um, 19 years old. And number two, what I needed to do to become a Christian. And this, this is as simple as I can say this, and I'm just about done. You've got to know that you're a sinful sinner. You've got to feel that in your heart. I am no different than anybody else. I'm not a good person. I have not been a good person. The Bible even say you're righteous as a filthy rag. I am a sinful sinner. But I believe that Jesus died for me and rose again. You believe that in your heart, that Christ is my only hope. And I put my faith in Christ for salvation. You repent of your sins. Jesus said, unless you repent, um, you will perish. Repent and be converted so your sins be blotted out. It means to change your mind, to make a U-turn, to reverse course. 
uh, to change the direction of your life. You've got to be born again. Uh, that's getting a new heart, a new spirit inside of you. And the result is you're a follower of Christ. And here's the reality. Nothing else is Christianity. And um, if you don't understand those things, those are the basics. People say all kinds of things. If you listen to people talk about the Bible, you will hear all kinds of things. And the reality is this. A lot of it's just not right. People say things that are just totally just not true. They may not even know it. Just like somebody saying, what ain't our points on the scoreboard? They have no idea how foolish they sound. Okay? They do not understand how foolish they sound. We, we, we're, we need two more points. No, you need you got runs. You don't even know what you're talking about. People say things, and they do not understand what the Bible's teaching. That's why I stressed it last lesson, how important it is. It changed my life to read the New Testament. It changed my life to read what Jesus said and to understand what's really going on here and not just listen to what somebody else has to say. So I don't know where you are. I don't know if you're on the right path or not. I don't know if you're saying things to just... But what you've heard somebody else say, if you're just going, assuming that you're on the right path, but you got to know these truths. I'm a sinful sinner. Christ is my Savior. I believe the gospel in my heart. I've repented. I've been born again. I am a follower of Christ. I'm not perfect, but my life sure looks a lot different than it used to before all that happened to me. Um, I love you. I hope this helps you. Um, I, I, my, my great hope, my great prayer is that you experience New Testament Christianity in your own life. Um, feel free to share this. Feel free to contact me, contact our church if you ever need to. Um, but I love you. Uh, feel free to read the book of 1 John. I mentioned it Wednesday night. It's a great place to start. That's what I was talking about tonight. All those three verses came out of 1 John. If somebody says this, but they do this, then they're, they're lying. That's they're, they're, crazy talk. And so you, you can understand what I'm saying. I don't want you to say, well, that's what this guy I said on Facebook I saw. That's what the preacher Hunter's Creek said. That's what my preacher. No, no, no. You need to read this and see it for yourself and know what you're talking about. So I love you. I'll be quiet for the, for the rest of the, the, this lesson. I hope to see you soon. Pray for us, and we'll be praying for you. God bless you.